It's strange to see shows you remember watching as a kid become classics for an entire generation, even if it feels like not much time has passed. No matter how life changes, you'll always be able to go back and rewatch the shows that made your childhood. Which is why, in this video, we'll be going through some of the Easter eggs and references in cartoons that are very close to our hearts. Before we get started though, leave a comment down below. Let us know what your favorite cartoon of all time is. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That way you enter into our monthly shout out giveaway. SpongeBob SquarePants is probably the best example of a modern classic. It goes without saying how much this show means to so many people. We'll get started with the season 10 episode, Snooze, You Lose. It starts with Squidward going to bed, excited that he has an audition for the Bikini Bottom Philharmonic the next day. Unfortunately for him, SpongeBob and Patrick are being noisy next door and keep him from sleeping. He goes for a walk, gets his houses confused, and falls asleep at SpongeBob's instead. When our dynamic duo can't seem to wake Squidward in time, they do the most logical option. Shoving themselves in his mouth and controlling him from the inside. Once they get to the audition, they meet Maestro Mackerel, a conductor with a very aggressive attitude. This character is actually a parody of Terrence Fletcher, a violent conductor from the 2014 film Whiplash. Not only is this due to the film being popular at the time, but both Mackerel and Fletcher are portrayed by J.K. Simmons, which really brings the point home. Thing, not on the thing. Oh, I... Who's that imbecile? The Squidward uh... Tentacles. Apparently, he's the clarinet player. All right, whenever you're ready. Why do you suppose I just hurled a chair at your head, Neiman? I, I don't know. Sure you do. The tempo? Were you rushing or were you dragging? Avatar The Last Airbender stands definitively as one of the most beloved shows of the 2000s. In Season 1, Episode 15, Bato of the Water Tribe, the Fire Nation duo of Prince Zuko and General Iroh come across June, an Earth Kingdom bounty hunter who captures his stowaway on their ship and runs off. After learning that her animal companion can track the scent of those miles away, they seek her out for help to capture the Avatar. When they find her, she's arm wrestling with an unnamed character who looks identical to Ryu from the Street Fighter series. Out of my way! Step aside, Phil! We love it when one of our favorite cartoons slightly breaks the fourth wall to reference another beloved cartoon. This is the case in Phineas and Ferb's Summer Belongs to You Season 2 Special. In this 45 minute episode, Phineas and Ferb want to take on the summer solstice by traveling around the world in one day. At every stop, they crash land and have to build a new invention to get them to their next location. After crashing onto a deserted island, Phineas starts panicking and frantically tries to build something to get them home. As he digs through the sand, he finds a yellow sponge and a pink starfish and remarks that there's gotta be something they can make out of them before throwing them into the ocean and saying that's ridiculous. Which, if you haven't put together, is clearly a nod to SpongeBob and Patrick. I don't know, Phineas. I think Steven Hillenberg has had quite a few ideas on what to do with those objects. I just feel like giving up. And look at it. Look, a sponge and a starfish. There's gotta be something we can make out of this. Oh, no, that's ridiculous. It's as if I don't exist. What do you think of this, Mr. Krabs? I call it Krabby Pate. Classy, huh? Serve it well, Todd Patrick. The Teen Titans episode, Revolution, has a lot of references to the famous British rock band, The Beatles. Even the title is a reference to their 1968 single of the same name. The episode is about the British villain Mad Mod overthrowing the 4th of July and hypnotizing everyone into believing they're in the UK. Now, there are many easter eggs and references about English culture to choose from, but the Beatles ones are plentiful. In a cutaway gag, Beast Boy plays a guitar that looks exactly like John Lennon's, Mount Rushmore gets vandalized from presidents into all four of the members' faces, there's even the infamous Walking Down Abbey Road reference that's been done time and time again. But why not compare animation with animation? 
The Beatles have an animated movie called The Yellow Submarine. The main antagonists are these creatures known as Blue Meanies. Going back to our show here, during the final battle with the Titans, Mad Mod reshapes himself into a form that looks quite similar to a Blue Meanie. And I bet even real British people don't like you. A frontal assault? Haven't you sprogs tried that already? <laughs> right! Destroy him! We meanies only take no for an answer. Is that understood, Max? No, your blueness. Let's get back to SpongeBob with the season 8 episode, Drive Through. The Krusty Krab has a hole on the side of the building, and Mr. Krabs gets the idea to turn it into a drive through. After the line gets so long it crowds the entire city, he smashes a second hole on the other side to make the process faster. Spoiler alert, it fails. During the madness, Plankton starts selling chum nuggets to people still waiting in line, and the chum bucket hat he wears looks very similar to the one he wore in the season 6 episode, Computer Overload. Chum nuggets here! Going fast, get them while they're cold, get them while they're runny! Looks like Krabs' drive through is really paying off. For me? Honestly, I don't think anyone in Bikini Bottom would know a decent meal if it looked them right in the eye and said, Hello, I have a decent meal. Wonderful to meet you. How about a turtle-tastic classic from the 1980s? The original cartoon for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sent the franchise from cult status to universally loved. In the episode, The Case of the Killer Pizzas, the turtles get flyers advertising free pizza at a bake-off and head straight to the event. Unbeknownst to them, Shredder sprinkles eggs on the food that will later hatch into creatures to destroy the turtles. As the episode goes on and our gang chases the creatures, they eventually grow into their final form, which look exactly like the xenomorphs from the Alien franchise. <laughs> There are two Indiana Jones references in the Pokemon Season 1 episode, episode, Attack of the Prehistoric Pokemon. The first is right at the start. Ash, Brock, and Misty are walking through Grandpa Canyon for an event called the Fossil Rush. Shortly after, they run into Ash's rival, Gary, who is dressed exactly like Indiana Jones. The second one happens when the gang comes across Team Rocket, whose plan is to blow up the canyon so they can steal all the fossils for themselves. Once they light the fuse, Ash runs down the mountain to put it out. As Jesse and James send their Pokémon out to chase him, they all slip, turning themselves into a giant boulder, referencing the infamous Indiana Jones scene from the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark. Don't you know anything? Huh? Ash, not only late as usual, but clueless too. Hey, it's Gary! Speaking of Pokemon in general, did you know that the members of Team Rocket are actually named after cowboys? The names of Jesse and James are a reference to the Little Dixie outlaw, Jesse James. Which makes sense considering how sneaky the duo of thieves at least attempt to be. While this can look like a coincidence at first, we actually have some silent confirmation on this. Like Ash, Jesse and James also have rivals, who come from a different group of Team Rocket. Their names are Butch and Cassidy. A nod to the train and bank robber, Robert Leroy Parker, more commonly known as Butch Cassidy. While dubbed anime can be a bit silly sometimes, you have to admit, their reference game is pretty spot on. To denounce the evils of truth and love. To extend our reach to the stars above. 
Jesse. James. Team Rocket blast off at the speed of light. And on September 5th, 1881, Jesse James was 34 years old. To denounce the goodness of truth and love. To extend our wrath to the stars above. Cassidy. Butch. We're Team Rocket circling Earth all day and night. Butch Cassidy's hole in the wall gang, that's me. Bank of over close to twenty thousand. You want Harvey to do your planning for you? Captain you want him to do your thinking for you? You want him to run things? You can shut up now, news. Oh, not yet till I get the good part. In the Simpsons episode, The Wife Aquatic, Marge gets nostalgic for an island she used to visit after watching a home movie. Thus, Homer takes the whole family there as a surprise, only to find that the island has largely fallen apart. While Homer goes on a fishing trip, everybody else goes to a museum based on aquatic life. The first thing they walk past is a statue of SpongeBob, and if you look closely, you can see a picture of Patrick right underneath him. Ooh, an institute! The second episode of the Powerpuff Girls, titled Powerpuff Bluff, has a fun cameo appearance in the background. In this episode, three guys attempt to rob a bank, a jewelry store, and kidnap the mayor, only to be defeated by the girls each time. Later, they get the idea to dress up as the Powerpuff Girls and just ask for everybody's money and belongings. While this goes on, we flip to see where our actual heroes are, finding that they're all taking a nap at Pokeyoke's Kindergarten. If you look on the right, you can see Dexter from the popular Cartoon Network show, Dexter's Laboratory, also catching some Zs. Oh, imposter Powerpuffs, what a drag! Girls, where are you? What are you doing? Oh. It's nap time at Pokeyoke's Kindergarten. <laughs> Nenda! Surprise, Dexter! What are you doing here? I've come to take your memories away! You'll have to fight me for them! My pleasure!